the ad market's changing. And this quote from from uh, Stanky, who's coming on board momentarily, we can't continue to jam an ever increasing amount of advertising down consumers' throats in a 30-minute block. This is the foundation of your businesses. So what? So what are you doing? How do you? Ch how do we change this? in the short term. Well, we're actively trying to do that. And I would agree 100% with that statement because the one thing that we all have to be very honest with ourselves about is the consumers are fully in charge. Mm -hmm. We're not. And so if, and if Netflix has taught us anything is that there used to be this uh, argument all the time, is content king, is distribution king? And the reality was they were always the coexistent partners. But now there's a third leg of the stool called the consumer experience. Mm -hmm. And if you don't provide the consumers with an absolutely phenomenal experience, they're going to go somewhere else because there's so much content available. And to what Debbie said, there's so much great content available. Right. There's going to be 500 dramas made this year in the US alone. They're going to go somewhere else and have a better experience. So we, as, as ad-supported cable networks, and advertising is 40% of our revenues, we have to make advertising be less of the schedule. Mm -hmm. We have to make the ads that we do have be more entertaining and contextually relevant. Mm -hmm. And as a result of that, because we're not in the business of trying to lose revenues, we want to grow revenues, that means we have to make the advertisements that we have more valuable. And we have to demonstrate that to marketers and to agencies, and that's what we're doing. Yeah. So and not do they want to hear that from you? Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. so. I mean, we have... Uh, Already in the marketplace for our new original programs on TNT and on True TV, we've got limited commercial interruptions. And we're seeing a lift in ratings as a result of that by at least double digits. So it's, uh, it's encouraging. Yeah, so it's, it's a two-prong approach. One, we have to limit the number of commercials uh, that we put on the air, uh, and we're actively doing that. And as John said, you have to come up with more creative ways to advertise, whether it's branded entertainment or you know, in product. Um, uh, pods or whatever, uh, but the first key is to, to reduce the, the amount of commercials because consumers will move away quickly. The second part is we have to have more compelling content. Mm -hmm. And right now, and I'm sure John goes through this too, every time you think of a show, you have to figure out whether it's uh, must-see TV and compelling and people have to show up when you put it on the air because that's the only way you uh, combat the, the binging um, um, habit that our audience now has. So the things that are working are sports, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, award shows, even though those are declining a little bit because now consumers say, well, I can wait. And if I hear that Justin Bieber you know, performance was really good, I'll watch it tomorrow. Right. Uh, but award show shows are still working. And the kind of buzzworthy programming where a consumer feels like if I don't catch it on Tuesday night when BET puts it on, I'm going to hear what happened and I'm going to feel out of it or I want to be part of the Twitter, Facebook right. conversation. So you saw that with Scandal. Uh, you saw, you know, we, we've had it, uh, as I mentioned, with New Edition or Being Mary Jane. But you have to, our shows have to uh, compel the audience to show up. Um, when we put it on. Um, and then we're all learning as this world changes that maybe doing deals with Netflix and Amazon and Hulu are not, is not the best idea right. uh, because you don't want your audience to say, well, I don't have to show up for that show. I'll just wait until it comes on Netflix. 